Hey everyone, Adrian Morrison here, and in this video, we are gonna talk about precise interest targeting with Facebook ads, okay? So uh, I kind of call this phase one of starting out with Facebook ads, and it's probably the best way, if you're new, to get started, the best type of targeting to use. Um, and it's, it's quite simple. You just have to know what to look for. I've taken many students that are brand spanking new that were struggling with campaigns uh, not profiting and shown them the strategy and taken them from losing campaigns to massive winners all right so there is a strategy there are phases in which you start doing using different types of targeting with facebook and i would say this is your starting point so you've got different targeting types like i said uh, we're going to be going over precise targeting. This is phase one of when you're getting started with Facebook ads. This is this is basically where you should start, okay? But there's also broad targeting, lookalike targeting, and oh my gosh, wait for it, zero targeting. Um, and I call that pixel magic. So, uh, you know, you're going to walk through these four phases. And I'm also going to throw in a bonus phase called behavior targeting. Here in a little bit so uh, that'll be in a different video but i'm gonna put it in here so we're gonna start at phase one i want you to think about it I, i've been using this analogy in a couple of videos um it's kind of like growing up you start out as a baby and um you know everything is just you it's kind of like uh when you when you have a new puppy let's put it that way you got a new puppy you gotta watch it more often and um, you got to be more precise with it you got to be careful what kind of food you give to it you got to be really careful with uh, your baby right or your puppy more precise in everything that you do and that's kind of what you do with precise targeting you're not just throwing your ad out there to a massive broad audience uh, you got to nurture it you've got to put some effort into it you, until it learns until it learns uh, you know where the buyers are where the profit is and uh, you do that best with precise targeting okay and uh, I hope that analogy made sense it's just one of those things it's like phases in life and growing up and getting more and more intelligent um, and, and as as you get more intelligent you can kind of broaden uh, the way that you, you do your targeting. So uh, let's start out with precise targeting. And here's a, a good little breakdown of what precise targeting is. First off, with precise targeting, you're gonna be hitting smaller audiences. So I'm talking about uh, audiences as small as, really as small as like 20 and 30,000 people on a keyword, uh, all the way up to 2 million people. So that would mean your entire audience would consist of 100,000 to, to 2 million people uh, and, and that would be what I would call a precise audience. Uh, the thing about this is you need more keywords to scale. So you're going to be building a keyword list. Okay, so that's the next point. Uh, you're going to be building a keyword list. Now with broad keywords, there's less keywords to mine for. Maybe one or two keywords tops and uh, you know, you've got a very broad audience. But with the precise keywords, they're made up of smaller audiences because they're so mega, mega precise. So you need a big list to really reach a lot of people. Um, these are the people that are very passionate about a specific niche. So I want you to write that down in your notes. Precise equal passionate. Precise equals passionate. The more passionate somebody is about a niche the more likely they are to convert the more likely they are to buy what you're selling right so these typically have very high conversion rates now they're not always going to be the winner the best converting but typically they are all right so if you're brand new um start with these if you've never made a facebook ad before then you're gonna to wanna to start with precise targeting because you are gonna be hitting the most passionate people. This is gonna give you the, the highest likelihood of success. Uh, this is the starting phase as a baby, right? And then you start to grow, you start to broaden, and you can start hitting some massive audiences. All right, so 
You can also use uh, precise keywords, even if you're advanced and you've got like a, a very uh, mature Facebook account and, and conversion pixel. You can use precise keywords to break into new niches. So what do I mean? Let's say that you are heavily uh, in the, I don't know, the military niche and you promote all sorts of like tactical goods. So flashlights, vests, um, holsters, all sorts of stuff. And that's been like your main squeeze, your bread and butter. But all of a sudden you decide you want to start targeting stuff toward uh, uh, animal lovers. Let's just say Yorkies, because that's what I'm going to use in this example. Um, you've got a mature conversion pixel, but it's used to targeting people that like military and tactical related gear. So you might want to start out your ad, even if you're advanced, if you're breaking into a brand new niche that you've never uh, targeted before, uh, you're going to want to use precise keywords because it's just going to better your odds. So an example of a precise keyword would be, I love my Yorkies. Uh, a broad keyword, which you'll see in the next video, would be Yorkshire Terrier or Yorkie. All right, so check this out. Here's a screenshot of the inside of Facebook targeting. And I've typed in Yorkie, and you're gonna see all these little small audiences. I love my Yorkie, I love my Yorkies, owned by Yorkies, and I mean, if I scrolled down, there would be a ton more. But notice they're very small audiences. Uh, I'll tell you right now, you'll see in the next video. Uh, if you're hitting the broad interest, the broad keyword for Yorkies, it's 3.4 million people. One keyword, Yorkshire Terrier, is 3.4 million people. But these smaller, precise keywords are uh, smaller audiences. And they're the most passionate uh, Yorkie lovers on Facebook. I can promise you that if you're associated with the keyword Yorkshire Terrier Okay, maybe you like Yorkies Maybe you don't but if you are associated with the keyword. I love my Yorkie. I love Yorkies My Yorkie owns me, <laughs> you know, um, I think we both could agree that this is a more passionate person about Yorkies, therefore they are more likely to respond to an ad about Yorkies or a necklace with a pendant of a Yorkie or something like that. All right, so let me show you an example where I split tested uh, a broad audience and a precise audience side by side. And uh, I spent fairly around the same amount of money on each ad. And it's not a quick test, this is a uh, this test is I spent about two thousand dollars in ad spend on this test. So here is a precise interest versus broad interest split test into a brand spanking new niche that I've never been in before. All right, so you'll see that the broad keyword is at the top and the precise keyword is at the bottom uh, or ad, and you'll see the broad campaign. I spent nine hundred sixty-one dollars and I made 1,619. Okay, I ain't crying, that's, that's good ROI, around 80% or so, this, that's not a bad ad. It's making me money, but check this out. The precise keywords, which are only reaching 670,000 people, are at $6.70 per conversion. I mean, the, remember, the lower your cost per conversion is, the better. You want your, in the blue box that's, uh, I have a little square around them. The lower that number is, the better. That means the cheaper you're getting convert, the, the less you're getting conversions for. Okay, now the second box, which is orange, is the money I spent. The green box is the money I made. So you can see the money I spent and how much I made. The precise targeted ad, I spent $1,100 and I made $2,500. So that's over 100% ROI, okay? I mean, that's, can you ask for much more? You know, I mean, 100% ROI is freaking amazing. Most businesses would kill just to be at 20% ROI. And here I am uh, with precise keywords at over 100% ROI. Now, I'm still profiting on the broad keywords, okay? I am, they're working, that's great. 
But as you can see, the precise keyword in this new niche is clearly winning and it's winning by a ton. Okay, so it's always intelligent to start with precise keywords or at least split test precise keywords in with broad and, and maybe both of them win or one loses and, and you just turn off the loser and you're left with the winner, right? But I'm hitting a smaller audience of more passionate people and that's likely why the conversion rate is higher and the ROI is higher because I'm not getting what you'll see in the video. The next video is called Likers by Association. You're getting people that are very, very passionate and bullseye targeted and these keywords are not guaranteed to, to make you uh, profitable, but they give you a better shot out of the gate. They really do. I love broad audiences. You're going to see in the next video, I just go you know, crazy over broad audiences. But when you're new and you're starting out and it's a new niche or a new store, precise keywords are going to be the best place to start. Now, you need to learn how to mine for these keywords. You got to dig them up and you can find some golden gems. You just have to know what to look for. You need to know how to identify a precise keyword, which would be a non-generic keyword. And I'm going to show you some tricks. Okay. So let's go to my Facebook account where I've already got an ad targeting pulled up. All right. So here we are in my ad account and I've got it to the point where we have a ad open and we're just at the targeting section where, where we're able to select our targeting. And you'll see here where it says detailed targeting. We're able to start playing around with interests uh, and keywords. So before I showed you, um, I love my Yorkies is a very precise keyword. So if I type in Yorkie, all right, it's going to give us a bunch of different keywords. Uh, and here's how you find the mega, mega, um, <clears throat> the mega, mega precise keywords. You see this one that's all capital letters. It's all caps says Yorkies and it's got an explanation point. 279,000 people. That is a precise keyword. How do I know that? because it's not generic. It's got that little exclamation point. You'll notice no other one in here has characters in it. Um, doll face Yorkies owned by Yorkies. I love Yorkies. These are more precise, terrific Yorkies. And you'll notice that they're smaller audiences opposed to not the chocolate bar Yorkie. But if I come over here and type in Yorkshire Terrier, look at this 3.4 million people. Uh, say they like Yorkshire Terriers. That's just the generic name of the breed, right? So what's going to happen is you got 3.4 million people that are associated with Yorkshire Terrier. You've got these things called likers by association, which you'll learn more about in the next video. But um, they're not all passionate. You know, somebody that typed in, I love my Yorkie is far more passionate and that's why it's only 240,000 people, right? Um, let's look at for some other keywords. How about nursing? All right. So you type in nursing and you'll notice here you've got interest, fields of study, jobs. Look over here to the right schools, employers. We're looking at interest and interest is a keyword. Okay. 81 million people are associated with the keyword nursing. That is huge. So how do you find precise keywords for nursing? Let me show you. As you scroll down, let's find some more precise keywords. Surgical nursing, new, I don't even know how to pronounce that. Uh, pediatric nursing, these are more precise. A nurse is generic, but these are specific types of nurses, okay? Also, you've got nursing management. Uh, you've got, let's see what else. We can find some really good things in here. All right, I don't see a ton of like, uh, great stuff here. So check this out. Watch this. Type in nurse. Now we've got different type like registered nurse. See how this this keyword is all lowercase. Um, it's the R in register is lowercase. The N in nurse is lowercase. This is a very precise interest. Okay, a very, very precise interest. Any keyword that's got all lowercase is very precise. Let me show you an example. You see up here where it says registered nurse, 4.8 million people, but it's got a capital R. 
Uh, and then down here, we've got the same keyword, less people, but all lowercase. This is a precise keyword. So this is the more generic term, and this is the more precise term. Facebook sometimes will have the same keyword twice, okay? And the one that's all lowercase with, a, with less people pulled into the interest is gonna be your precise one. And this one's gonna convert better. I promise you, this one right here is gonna be the better keyword with the more passionate nurses in here. All right, so if we scroll down, licensed practical uh, nurse and um, American Nurses Association. We could all agree that this is a very precise keyword. Um, you got people that you know say that they like nursing, but the American Nurses Association, this is gonna be an extremely precise keyword. Now, when you click on that, guess what Facebook, uh, Facebook does? They start recommending to you other precise keywords. Nurse in all capital letters, this is precise, okay? Now, the broad ones are the ones that do like International Nurses Day, um, a capital I, capital N, capital D. That's a more broad, well, it's, it's a small audience, but typically the broad keywords have everything starting with a capital letter. If it's all caps, that means it is all caps or all lowercase, usually means precise, so nurse. And, and I'll show you once again. Let me just type in nurse again uh, and see if I can get just the, the word nurse to pull up. Let's see here. Okay, so I don't even see nurse, just regular nurse as a key word. That's, that's interesting. Uh, but anyways, I promise you this, this one that's all caps, it stands out. You see there's very few that are all caps in here. Uh, that's because this is a very unique keyword. Uh, another unique one that I just saw in here is nurse.com. Okay, so this is people that have gone to the website uh, and are associated with the website nurse.com. That's a very precise keyword. If you can find domain names, oh my gosh, these are some of the best keywords you can find. Very hard to find them, very rare, um, and they don't always exist for your niche. But if you can find a keyword that is a .com, then I mean, it's usually really great. Look at this, future nurses. Uh, and allnurses.com, oh, that's another good one. Allnurses.com, dang, that's awesome. Um, I should be using that one. And then I love being a nurse, 80,000 people, this is precise. So you see how I'm building up a, a list of keywords and we're still only hitting 2.4 million people. So you can come in here, look, registered practical nurse. This is a broad, I'm sorry, this is a unique uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Precise keyword, because that's all lowercase. So not all uh, precise keywords are gonna be lowercase or, um, look at this, QD nurses, that's probably another good one. Um, not all precise keywords are gonna be all uppercase or all lowercase. There's a lot of times you'll see keywords like this that are very, very precise. Um, these in their even small audiences and they have capital letters in them but if it's a if it's like an association look Tennessee Nurses Association Minnesota Nurses Associate Association um, California Association National Nurses United um, certified registered nurses so some of these are really, really small audiences, but they add up. Look, now we're at 3.1 million people, but we're hitting very precise keywords. Another thing to note is precise keywords will also be long, long tail keywords. Notice how long these are. American Association of Nurse, uh, I'm getting so tongue tied, but you know what the word is. Uh, and same thing would go for um, veterans. Right, so if you were targeting veterans, you could type in veteran and you've got 15 million people uh, as an interest for veterans. Okay, uh, Veterans Day, you've got three, three million people. Veterans US, five million people. But then you've got the veteran site, which is precise. Um, and let's see, 
disabled American veterans. That's going to be more, it's a big key word, but it's more precise. It's just veterans is very generic. Disabled American veterans is going to be something that's more precise. Vietnam Veterans Memorial. So these are where you know you're hitting the actual veterans uh, with your targeting, opposed to people that just you know are thankful and proud of their veterans. Uh, another thing that you can start looking for uh, with like veterans, uh, you can just type in veteran, and let's see what else. Actually, you know what? As you hit some of these uh, more precise keywords, let me just see. Like veterans, uh, veterans benefits administration. This is a more precise keyword. Let me just get rid of some of the nursing stuff. This is fun. I could stay in here forever and keyword mine. Remember, long tail or something that really sticks out with characters in it, all caps, all lowercase. These are going to be your more precise keywords. All right. So look, now we've got Reserve Officers Association, Vietnam Veteran. United States uh, Army submarine veterans. Uh, so it starts, it will actually start giving you some very precise keywords. Uh, the Wounded Warrior Project would be a more um, precise keyword, even though it's a huge, huge audience. It's something that's, you know, more specific. Uh, it's going to be a pool of more passionate people. So veterans, uh, you, that's an example using veterans. How about dogs? Dogs is a very broad keyword, okay? But what if you get into, um, I love my dog. All right, so I love my dog. Look, I love my dog fan. Look at this one, a special character. You got 6,000 people in there. It's not a big audience. Remember, you're gonna have to pull these together. I love my dog by familyshare.com. I love my dog fan. I heart my dog. Look at, look at all of these precise keywords that we're able to, once you find one or two, you can really start finding a nice big group of precise keywords. Dog lovers, look at this. The ones with the funky characters in them are always very precise keywords. Okay, so you can find 50, 60 different precise keywords. I mean, you can really get into it here. Um, usually I'll just uh, try to find like 15 or 20 build an audience of around 2 million people, if possible, with these precise keywords and start to crush it. Um, another uh, niche that I was working with a student in is in the steampunk niche. Steampunk is, honestly, I don't know what it is. I really don't. I have no clue. But it's a type of book series, I believe. I don't know. They, they started a niche site targeting uh, with steampunk jewelry and stuff. Um, it's just kind of like a uh, uh, look like kind of like comic type stuff. Steampunk has 5 million people uh, under the broad keyword, but steampunk fashion has 100. Look at this. When I t did that, look what comes up. Steampunk couture, steampunk world's fair, steampunk magazine, junkies. Would, wouldn't you say that these people that are associated with the festival, junkies, the magazine, steampunkcouture.com, wouldn't you say that these are all more passionate people about the niche. Look, instead of hitting 5 million people with these keywords, we're hitting 200,000 people. But these are extremely passionate people about steampunk. You can even start looking for uh, authors of steampunk type books and you can target the authors. You could target the titles of the books. Um, and look, steampunk comics. Uh, and you know, you can really start building some nice audiences. You're not always going to be able to get them into the millions, but you can certainly get them into the hundreds of thousands. And if I proved anything in my slideshow, it's that a, a group of a couple hundred thousand people can convert at a very high rate and make you thousands, tens of thousands, potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars if, if you do everything right. So this is just uh, getting mining for some very specific keywords having to do with steampunk. What about the Second Amendment? How about that? That's a huge niche is the Second Amendment and tactical type stuff. All right, so a broad keyword would be Second Amendment. Uh, three, well, I don't think I spelled it right. 
actually I use the two second probably get a bigger audience if I spell it out because I don't think uh, you know <laughs> that they just put a two in front of it so Second Amendment Foundation uh, 2.8 million but Second Amendment Sisters is a more precise keyword 600,000 the Second Amendment 119,000 people um, this is going to be a, a smaller keyword uh, because you'll, you'll notice that uh, when you start typing in Second Amendment different ways, there will be some big, big keywords that come up. Second Amendment supporters, 20,000 people. Second Amendment clothing. Okay, so let's just grab one of the, the precise keywords. So second, present, second Amendment supporters. Now watch. Protect the Second Amendment, all right? That's gonna be more precise. People, These people are more passionate. Um, Illinois gun owner rights. Gun rights across America. Uh, you've got, uh, <laughs> you see all sorts of crazy keywords that come up. Gun Owners Action League, open carry. Uh, you've got Second Amendment Foundation, which we went over, Texas gun owner, gunsinternational.com, right? That's probably a great keyword, slickguns.com. Uh, so these are all very precise keywords, and they're gun lovers, right? And if you are targeting that type, you're trying to hit that audience, these are the types of keywords that you're, you're going to want to grab. You're not going to want to come in here and grab the standard keyword for the Second Amendment uh, Foundation, which is obviously, uh, I thought just Second Amendment was in here. It used to be, but Facebook changes. So I guess this probably is the most broad keyword that they have. Uh, nope, there it is. Second Amendment to the United States Constitution. That's the broad keyword. 8.2 million people. Okay. Um, so this is the broad one. And this right here would be a more precise. All of these would be more precise. Okay. Um, same thing with uh, like guns. 4.6 million people say they like guns. 3 million like guns and ammo. But Something like Guns Magazine, where'd that go? That's more precise, 519,000 people, okay? Um, and you've got all sorts of all sorts of stuff in here. You even got um, My Cold Dead Hands. It's a very, very, very popular phrase in history you should know about. Uh, so from My Cold Dead Hands is 1.4 million people. Very bullseye targeted, precise keyword. Now we've built an audience of 1.9 million people of very precise keywords. So they're not always going to be lowercase. They're not always going to be all uppercase. Um, they're going to be long tail. They're going to be have special characters or dot coms in them. Or they're going to be all lowercase. And um, when you can find those, you know you're hitting precise keywords. I guess I could. I'll leave you with this. You can tell. If it is a um, broad keyword, if it's just super generic, like the right to keep and bear arms, 5.3 million people. Whereas um, you've got other keywords in here, like bear arms. Let me just type that in. The right to bear arms, 1.5 million people. My right to bear arms, 14,000. Right to now look at this one uh, right here. Right to keep and bear arms went lowercase, but it's a bigger audience than this up here. That's kind of confusing. That's that's kind of rare. Usually, if it's got the lowercase in it, it's smaller. But there's always an exception to the rule. Preserve our right to keep and bear arms. This is a great uh, precise keyword. It's all lowercase. Look at this one. All lowercase. Citizen committee. Uh, this is a, a bigger keyword but it's going to be a little bit uh, more precise. Right to keep bear arms in the U.S. So the more generic ones are going to be your broad ones. Um, and the ones that are more long tail and uh, more specific, those are going to be your precise ones. So if you start using precise keywords, you can build up big audiences. And you do it by pulling in a bunch of different precise keywords full of passionate people on that niche. And that's how you target your ad out of the gate with phase one. If you're brand new or you're hitting a new audience, these are the types of keywords that you want to look for. And they're just more precise of course. Obviously that's what they're called and uh, more passionate users on Facebook. So I hope you learned a lot in this video. Start 
pooling together and creating your precise audiences. And I promise you this, you'll find that they render higher click rates, higher conversion rates, and eventually these will propel you toward being able to target more broad audiences. This is not hard. You just have to know what to look for. Like a lot of people don't know that you can target websites. Like you can find these keywords like right here, which are usually just phenomenal keywords to have. Uh, they don't know that. You just kind of know that it's there and start looking for it. And Facebook will throw it in your face. All you have to do is find two or three precise keywords and then Facebook will know what you're looking for. They're, they'll say, oh, they're looking for more precise terms and they start suggesting them to you. So Facebook is always trying to help you. You just have to know that and then start looking. All right, that's it for this video on precise keywords. Hope you learned a lot. I'll see you on the next one.